Now, for a person who has spiritual absence disorder, it can be for a, a very short time and it can go on for a long time, but, but unfortunately, if it's left untreated, if, if you don't use that doubt, if you don't use that feeling, that understanding of, of, of the fact that God feels to be separated from you, then, then it can spiral and get worse and get worse and get worse. People suffering from spiritual absence, from spiritual absence disorder tend to act like people who are away from God. And, and a lot of people that are that are those practical atheists. Like I said, we, we go to church on Sunday, we pray before meals, but, but we act the rest of the time in our life like God really doesn't have anything to do with our lives at all. It affects every part of us. And the immediate effects, it affects us psychologically, physically, behaviorally, and most importantly, it affects our relationship with God. And it results in, and y'all know anytime just about the Bible talks about death, it's talking about what kind of death? Spiritual death. It's talking about a separation from God. Jesus said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Spiritual absence disorder can only be treated by the Son. S O N. There's there's not there's not anything synthetic out there. There's not a there's not a fake light that we can use. We we try to use a lot of things. We try working really hard or 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 being uh, or getting the approval of other people or or if that stuff doesn't work then we kind of self medicate ourselves. There's there's a lot of things that we do and and some of those things will work for for a short period of time even for a season. But but what we find out is 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 you just cannot feel a God-sized voice in your void in your life without God. The symptoms of sad spiritual absence disorder are harmful in all areas of your life. And Galatians 5, 19 through 21 gives a, a kind of a, a list of symptoms. If you look there on your notes, he says, the Apostle Paul writes, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature as opposed to what? What's he talking about? If you follow your desires of your sinful nature or the world, worldly nature or what the world wants as opposed to what? God, right? Or the Holy Spirit. Then, then there are certain things that, that become a part of your life. Remember I said a minute ago you start acting like somebody who God's not a part of their life? And look what it says. He says, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality. Impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties. Can you see those? Paul and the apostles do oh, I don't that part. It seems weird to me. Other sins like these. But let me tell you again, as I have before. <coughs> That anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, there's there's two things here. This isn't just about going to heaven or not. Remember, Jesus brought the kingdom of God here so that we live out the kingdom here. And what he's saying here is, first of all, if you haven't got Christ in your life and you haven't been changed, and this is you just because this is who you are, then, then there's probably a really good chance you haven't become a Christian. You haven't made that commitment to follow Christ. But the other thing he's saying here is, look, Christian, because he's writing this to the church, the Galatian church. He's saying, look, Christian, if you're living your life this way, then you have spiritual absence disorder. You are away from God. So you're not living out the kingdom of God. You're not getting the benefits that comes in living out the kingdom of God. You're, you're not affecting other people positively for the kingdom of God. You are living more like people of the world he says. These are, these are the symptoms of that. And, and, and there, there are a few things that will, that will kind of help pull you into that. First of all, we've got to realize that most people, would you agree, most people, your goal in life is that you want to be happy. You know, you see somebody interview, they go, what do you want in life? Well, I just want to be happy. What do you want for your kids? Oh, I just, I just want my kids to be happy. And, and, and we, we, we pull that happy part. And, and, and the the, the problem is, is if that's what our focus is, then when we become disappointed, when we get broken, when 
devastation happens in our life. And, and when we live our life separated from God and, and uh, disobedient to what God has, wants us to do, then wanting to be happy doesn't work. That's when you hear people complain about why God isn't doing this and why God isn't doing that and, and why this hadn't worked out the way they expected. See, people believe that God wants us to be happy. But what God really wants is what? He wants us to be transformed. He wants us to be changed. He wants us to be more like His Son, Jesus Christ. Look at Romans 8, 28, 29. And some of you are really familiar with Romans 8, 28 because it's one of those pull it out of your pocket verses when you are dealing with somebody that's struggling. But then listen as we go into verse 29. The Apostle Paul writes, and we know that God what? Causes everything. Everything. Good things and bad. That doesn't mean everything's from God. It doesn't mean all the bad things that happen in your life is from God. He says, God takes everything, every single thing that you interact with, that the rest of the world interacts with, He uses it all for us Christians. Paul's writing this to, to uh, the Christians in Rome. He says it causes it all to work together for the good of those who love God and are called, what? According to His purpose for them. See, there, there are all of us in here the, the person sitting next to you, me, all of us in here, we have a different purpose. It's all a part of the kingdom. But God uses all the things that have happened in our life to get us ready for that next step of ministry. I tell people in here all the time, there are people that you can minister to that I can't because of the experience that you've had in your life. That's that kingdom work that God wants. God wants to use all of those things that have happened. If you think back on where you were born and how you were born and whether you had good parents or abusive parents or, or no parents at all or, or you had teachers that were good or teachers that were bad or you've had boyfriends that have dumped on you or, or whatever. Whatever the things are, all of those things and then the good things that have happened. Has God, has God blessed you with, with money? Has, has, has God allowed you to just kind of go along and just have a really cool, incredible life? Can you look back and go, you know, nothing really bad has ever happened to me. God takes all of those things and He makes them work according to His purpose for you. And then it, there's what He says the good is. Verse 29. For God knew His people in advance. And He chose them to become what? Like His, son. like His Son. So that His Son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Isn't that cool? It's not just about... I hear that, I hear that verse, verse Romans 28... Romans 8, 28 quoted all the time. Something terrible happened, something. And, and, and they'll go, oh, God did that for a reason. That's not what that scripture says. Remember the last few weeks we've talked about the fact that we live in a fallen world and because of that stinking stuff happens sometimes. But God promises to take the good things and the bad things and make them work according to His purpose for you. See, the cool thing about that is, is you can literally, you can walk around with your spiritual antenna up and go, you know, my life is this way. And so, so God must have something really cool planned for me. And, and as you keep your antenna up, what happens is, is it starts giving you little pieces at a time. Remember last week we talked about God giving you glimpses of, even in the middle of the bad, He gives you glimpses of the things that He's going to do. That's what He does with all of us. And, and a lot of times, just be honest. I'm not talking about raising your hand or anything, but be honest. A lot of times you don't even put your spiritual antenna up until you come to church. And you've missed opportunities to be like the sun. And so it's all week long. 